Yes, people, another Wednesday, man, them chat. Good day again. This evening, we've got a very special guest in the house here, a true general, a man who's mm. kept the Luton's name up in the sound system business for decades. Yeah. Also, football coach, um, I would say, you know, youth mentor. <laughs> we've got Scully, aka the landlord. <laughs> How you doing, alright, guys? Thanks yeah, for having me. Big up, Scully. Welcome, man. Yeah, big yeah. up, man. Big up. So, Scully, you want to yeah. give, give it to us from the beginning, man? Growing up, you know, <clears throat> yeah, well, and um, family that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I can do. Um, my name is Sean Joseph Griffith. I was born in um Northwest London. Um, that's my roots. Uh, born and grown. Uh, left school at the age of sixteen. Was an apprentice footballer, professional um, apprentice goalkeeper, turned professional footballer. Um, also, was travelling up. My cousins Laurie Lyle and Robbie Lyle, known as Crucial Robbie or <laughs> Robbie Don, uh, if you want to look at it from AFTV. Uh, his mum and my mum were first cousins. I mean, sisters, I should say. So we're first cousins. So on a weekend, I used to travel up to Luton. Um, from the age of about 11, 12, to be fair. And then my cousin formed a sound and I used to just tag along, really, when, when I wasn't playing football. So um, at the age of 16, when I started playing football, I moved to Watford um, in Diggs at the time, where um, a couple of us stayed with a lady. So like a live-in, we had our own room and we had a landlady who took care of us, you know, cooked our meals and all that. I used to go home on a weekend and bring food up, because obviously I didn't agree with the food. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just stuff like that, generally, really. And move forward from there. So, yeah, um, that was it. I carried on um, with the, the music throughout the years and carried on playing um, sound system. So how did you How did you juggle the two of them, the football? And uh, well, you was, yeah, you was a pro for Watford, yeah? Yeah. Was it, was it, um, there's going to be many black goalies around in then. In, in, in... No, at the time, um, I think there was two. I was probably the second, or maybe the first. So it was one or the other. But there was only me and a guy called Derek Richardson, who played for Man City at the time. And Man City was a Division Two team. So yeah, so um, obviously there wasn't many black footballers, let alone um, let alone our goalkeepers. Hmm. So yeah, it was um, it was a task growing up with obviously racism was a big thing back in the eighties. I think eighty five, eighty six. I was playing. That's when I done my apprenticeship and um, grew up. You got, through... you got, you got any horror stories? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um, I remember playing a couple. Of, to be fair, I remember playing at Newcastle um, and having to have a police escort off the pitch. Um, West Ham was another one, and Millwall. So. Where um racism was well just probably just accepted in some people's eyes, you know um. You get that thrown at you and stuff like that. Yeah, that was a, that was the standard thing to be fair. Yeah, um, coins and you know tops of lids, you know coke bottles and stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> but at the time you just you just got on with it, you know. Obviously, um, I'd say it's got better, but. In, in it's still there. It's probably hidden better, you know. Yeah. True. We're all faced with racism on a day to day basis, you know. But yeah, there you are. But um, it, it didn't stop me. It probably more encouraged me to um get on in life. And my way out of it was playing music because I really, I think music and sport go together quite often anyway. Yeah. So um, I, I've always loved music, and that was like um my Get out, you know, away from football. So, yeah, so it was good. And um, I'm luckily enough that I've managed to carry on playing music and carry on being involved in football, which is, um, I'm very thankful. <coughs> so, me. you me you mentor now, don't you? Train. Well, yeah, what I do, um, my, my, my business, I'm a football agent, a licensed football agent. I've got a company called 5050 Sports Management with me and I've got a partner, a uh, business partner. We've been going for about 10 years, our agency. And um, I also coach. I'm an A-licensed coach. I've done my badges when I was quite young. Um, so I normally look after 
or is that of sometimes gone the wrong way, you know, uh, in football um, and lads just looking for opportunities, you know, because um, nowadays football, it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know, yeah. you know, and um, I'm fortunate enough to know a few people. So I help people, you know, um, I coach them and do mentor some of the young, younger players and um, give them opportunities. Mm. Yeah, we had, we had Selwyn on last week, and he sort of brought you up in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, Selwyn does work with me as well. To be fair, mm. yeah. yeah, in um, a couple of ways. <laughs> to be fair, so yeah, so, I mean, um, I think we're just out there to try and help people to mm. give something back because I, I think I was quite fortunate. I'm um, growing up. Um, the people that helped me, you know, went out their way and helped me. So it's like giving something back as well. Yeah. So, so what happened, Scully, then, with the football? Did, did music come in the way and sort of put a Yeah, stop I think, um, or... well, if, if people that know me know I'm not the tallest. So that was always going to be an issue yeah. when you're yeah. in goal. You know, um, it's not as big as it was now. But um, so, uh, to be fair, um, I, I carried on playing until I was 38. But I played semi-pro for a while. I played the professional level for about six, seven years. And then um, I, every year I struggled to get a, a club. So in the end, I said, oh, I'm going to go and get a job and play semi-pro. And it actually worked out probably better at the time, you know. Um, luckily enough, when I was playing, I was earning reasonable money. So um, I sort of um, had some money to put put away and just that like, helped me get on, you know. Yeah, so that was, um, I was quite fortunate like that. And then playing um, semi-pro, I was earning good money, probably a bit less than what I was earning when I was a professional, mm. yeah, so, but with a lot more security, you know. So yeah, so it was good. But um, and then you used to do, deco you used to do decorating. Too. Yeah, I had a decorating company as well. Yeah, yeah. I had a decorating <laughs> company. Um, I've tried everything, but to be fair, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, to be fair, when I was at Watford, um, they used to encourage you to either get a trade, or um, you know, yeah. the academic, uh, which I wasn't. So I chose a trade. So I, mm. I've done paint and decorating. Now um, that's good. All, 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 all yeah. of this is all of this is pre Premiership, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, exactly right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so man, man, footballers have to go get a job. A lot of footballers. Yeah, I, I like um, yeah. Think yeah. about it, Warwick. Even some of the um, players that were big players back in the day at Watford. And when I look at them now, like some of them are not involved in football as much and are um, still working. And them guys have played like hundreds of games, you know. But you have to look at it. The money that they get now um, isn't like what we had, you know. It wasn't the Premiership, it was League One. Yeah, and yeah. It still was on good money because I remember back then my dad was on 80 to £100 pound a week and I was on like £300. What do you mean? So money was, right. still, it was still quite a lot, do you mean? And my dad was a plumber, he had a decent job. So, so you know, like you know, like probably like the top the top ballers at Watford, like yeah, the of how much would they how much would they sort of be earning well, in those days? I spoke to Luther Blissett and he, he to be fair, because we actually spoke about it and he said uh, oh. the most he earned them times was fifty thousand um for the year. Mm. But fifty thousand for the year was a lot of money then, you know. Mm. So um you, you know, you look at it then it was it was good, good money. Mm. Yeah, average player um, gets that a week. A week, yeah. Yeah, that's that's wages, man. you know, um I I look after players, that's my, my, my full time job. And um we've got no one in the Prem, but we've got a few in the championship and um they earn good money. They yeah, your volume your volume's gone down a bit, Scotty. So, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, saying I'm um, skip. We I look after a few players in the championship. Um mm. championship league one, league two, and they earn good money. You know, mm. they are very, very good money. You know, especially the championship, you know. Yeah. But, um, the Premier League, I think you play, if you play in the Premier League for a season, then you're a millionaire. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's as easy as that. So. But yeah, money has taken, money. money's massive in football now. Um, and it's it's one of them, you know. Sometimes it's the luck of the draw. I've got a friend who um, has been an agent just over a year, but he moved maintenance Niles the other day and like the money he's earned off of that, you know. It's, it's, it's life changing. Mm. So, you know, so yeah, so um, luckily enough, I'm fortunate enough to be in it, be involved in it, which is good, mm. and still continue playing music. Yeah, so you've been coaching for what, about 11 years, yeah? 
No, I've been coaching for over 20 years. Um, I've been okay. worked at Aston Villa, uh, Luton, Stevenage, uh, mm. Barnet and Southend. Right, okay. Worked at quite a few clubs, to be fair. Yeah. And um, I've always kept coaching where I coach um, my outfield players as well as goalkeepers. Mm. Um, I do some work at some local clubs like Crawley Green. My local club, I, I do some work there on a Thursday night and go and coach the boys mm. as well. So, yeah, um, I try and keep myself active. Sure. After I finish, I'm going to watch a game. <laughs> you know, so you're always out and about. To be fair, but it's what makes you happy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 How's the progression within sound system? How did that? Yeah, the sound system's good. Um, the, the, I, well, I think the business isn't as good as it used to be. Definitely not. Um, no disrespect to the younger. Scully, I, I Scully, before, before, before we go in that, Scully, give us some background. All right, so you obviously. Yeah. Lloyd, 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 Lloyd and Robbie are your cousins. Yeah. 80, 82, they build a sound. Yeah. yeah. Sovereign. sovereign. Yep. What happened next? How did you kind of... Well, to be fair, in the beginning, I used to just tag along and they used to say, no, nah, don't tag along, man. Go and concentrate on your football. But uh, I was quite... I just, just yeah. You know, and um, I used to just help string string up in, in the beginning, just string the boxes up pull them out of the van and just enjoy playing. You know, going to a dance and raving. I wasn't... Um, and then gradually I started putting the records in the sleeves, right. you know. Um, and I think one time, I think Danny, Danny Baines, rest in peace, Lloyd didn't turn up and Danny was selected. And um, I know Danny used to just play a lot of studio ones. He was really good at it. So I just stood behind him, putting the records in the sleeve. And then he said to me one day, look, you have a go. So I had a go, and so from then I used to just go to the dance early just to warm up. Mm. As people were coming in, you know, warm up, and then once there's a few people in it, I had to put the, put the records down and they'd take over. The MCs would come in and stuff like that. But it, it was a good learning. And then... Um, that, was, that was quite kind of him, isn't it? Because in them days, you know, a certain man, they're not even... No, 100%. You're not bringing a man true, you know? You're not coming Yeah, no, you're exactly right. You know, I mean, but Danny, Danny, Danny was nice like that, wasn't he? Yeah, he, 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 was, he was, to be fair. Um, and he yeah. gave me that opportunity, you know, where my cousins, I was hanging about, hanging about, and they were just they used to overlook it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're, you're a footballer, you know, to do with music, so... But just the love of it, you know, and um, from there, just getting involved in... um enjoying going to house parties and stuff like that, which probably um, strayed me from my football, you know. Mm. <laughs> um, I was out a lot later and stuff like that, but I, I made it work because it was my enjoyment. So, mm. you know, I think, uh, you know, footballers, um, a lot of them that play have their ever, like they either go and play golf or they on drink or whatever. You know, everyone's got their substitution, you know, a different hop habit, you know, and my habit was music. You know, mm. some of them would go out and drink or take drugs or, you know, or womanize or whatever. You know? Yeah, because you don't drink and you don't smoke, do you? No, and, and to be fair, when you're playing, remember, you've got a lot of time on your hands. Mm. You know, you well, play when, football, you train. Well, when I was a youth scully, in it, you could either, you'd find most of the Luton footballers that at the yeah. Rocky or Biscot Road. That's right, Warwick, exactly right. right. Or, or the one on Lee Grave Road, just before the bridge, <laughs> before you come into yeah, the very yeah. far. So if you yeah. wanted to meet a footballer, right, he doesn't go down there, sir. you mm. see yeah, the whole of Warwick, that's the exactly right. would be down there. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. So, um, yeah, most I never days, had them. I was, my most days, like, straight like, after training, mate. That's where you'd find yeah. them. Yeah, yeah so um, mm. that, that was um, my excitement. I, I really liked travelling out and... At the time, the sound was playing out a lot, was travelling to different places, so it was really good. So, yeah, it was um, it's something that stood out in me growing up. Mm. It was the man name in the sound back then? Because I know there's... There was, there, was a, there was a load. There was... um, It was um, Lloydie, Robbie, Ian, Slengting, Alan Baptiste, Roy Baptiste, Ailali was one of the owners, Slengting, uh, Kenny, there's Paul Gonzalez... Uh, Charlie Digital, Marcus Irie, Longman, mm. uh, bigger, uh, bigger Dread, yeah, bigger Dread, Danny Baines, Nicky Baines, you know, Neely Dread, Paul Douglas, yeah, there, there's the list goes on. There's probably probably twenty men strong, you know. Mm. When, mm. when we were playing out, the the back of the truck was full up. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so yeah, so but back, back then it was enjoyable because we played out half a Luton would um come and support us. 
And then a man would be playing around the corner. Gemini would still be ram their dance. Falcon would still be ram, or whoever's playing the dancers would be ram. Mm. You know, um, as we know. And back then, I think the the music scene in Luton was um, very, very good. You know, the respect people had for Luton sounds, not just Sovereign, um, Gemini, Falcon, and as it went on, upper class. You know, Turning Point, you lot guys, Black Star. You know, you. The list goes on. People respected the sounds from Luton, you know, mm. and the support was there. Mm. So, yeah, it was good, you know. Um, obviously, the blues parties and stuff like that. It, it was just good. Venus as well. There was still mm. about. So, yeah, uh, there was a lot um, a lot going on. How many man names in the sound now? I know uh, people grow three, and... three of us. There's me, Ronnie Biggs, and um, Dapper. Mm. Dapper lives in Peterborough, so he does a lot that way. But, yeah, Ronnie Biggs just left my house because we, um, we've got a clash coming up, so... Was there preparing? So, are you clashing? I've uh, got a sound called SB. Uh, the guys from King Tubby sound, they've got a set. Um, so, yeah, that's so have, you, have, you, have you found an alternative venue for that then? Yeah, yeah, the, it's in London. They're playing oh, a so venue so called uh, so venue. Going into their battleground, Scully. But you know what, Warwick? It's probably working in my favor because it's in Northwest. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so when, when they said to me it's in Northwest, I was like, "Yeah, that'll do me. I'm, I'm happy with that." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, because I I won a trophy in Northwest um in 2015 16, mm. and it was all sounds from London and Northwest. So I know I've got good support down there. Mm. You know, and I know Luton people would travel out as well, so it's good. Yeah, it's not too but, far. It's not too far. Top of the motorway, in it for Luton. yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, um, down the road, isn't it? Exactly right, and it's. And it's all just being involved in it, you know. Um, I'm, I'm starting to like that side of it more. Mm. Where before I was like going into the juggling dances and stuff like that. But when you like you go into some of these dances and there's ten sounds playing or eight sounds playing and the music's been repeated, so mm. I try to keep away from that now. And if there's more than three sounds in it, I'll try not to play. I just tell the promoter I'm quality, playing. Quality over quantity. Yeah, over quantity. Exactly mm. right. Because okay. yeah. you you look, remember back in the day when we all played. Would play all night. Yeah, mm. you have to play. You know, you, yeah, you know, yeah. and and I think then the sort and and wouldn't repeat a tune. <laughs> Do you mean? No. Do you know what I mean? Where now you you can go to a dance now, say drift, and hear that like seven times. You know, mm. till <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're fed up with the tune. I think um nowadays, and this is not being disrespectful, but it's too easy to become a DJ. Mm. And, then, and and with that now, this it's a, a very unprofessional. Very hard, you know, that's what I'm saying. It was, it was very hard, you know, because obviously, you know, um, when, when we started and coming through, yeah. you, you lot were the, like the premier sound, you know, in the yeah. town. And, and even to try even to compete and to be anywhere close to it was, was, was hard. It was just blood, yeah. sweat and tears, man. You know, I yeah. I remember, you know, as I said, you know, skanking trains, kind of, just skanking the train. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I tried, oh, but, to, but, tried to get to dub vendor. On a yeah, Thursday, exactly you've right. only got about twenty five pound. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Exactly, exactly right. You know what I mean, it's just, it's. Just, I think Warwick, them, them things there. You, you just play yeah. music for the right for the love of it. Then now a lot of people yeah. are playing yeah. music for the yeah. hype, and, mm. and that, that that was the difference. And not only that, you had your unique style, so yeah. people would come and hear you just because they want to hear Turning Point. You know what I mean, yeah. yeah. And uh, and that's the difference nowadays. Um. Because you, you know what like, I discovered in those days, Scully, because sometimes when I used to like come out and hear you lot play, there were certain like 45s what you lot used to have. Yeah. I didn't know. I, 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 could, I could never seem to get hold of them. Yeah, and yeah. One day, I, think, I don't know, someone either told me or I figured it yeah. out for myself, but you lot were getting a lot of tunes from Ernie's shop in Wembley. That's you? right. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I found, and I found out. I found out and I thought, yes. And I, and I started to go there as well. You know, as, as yeah, well that's as right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And started to get them one, 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 one. You know what I mean? Sometimes I even watch. back then, Warwick, as you know, like you guys, yeah. you'd be searching for a tune, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah so, yeah, um, and, and it's no different from us looking up to sounds like Coxon and Saxon and that same thing again, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, um, and I think, not bashing the younger DJs, I think um, you miss that, you know, um, that education. I'm not saying everyone, but I think at that time, I wouldn't say I was multi-talented, but I wanted to learn. Mm. And you wouldn't be scared to ask questions. You wouldn't be scared to go to a dance. I used to go to Jamaica three times a year, mm. um, go and listen to Stone Love and stuff like that, just to get that experience. 
long cut dubs and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was something I've enjoyed. And, and them times you will never get back because meeting artists like Garnet Silk and Nitty Gritty and Dennis Brown and Gregory Isaacs, you know, the list goes on. Yeah. And they're dirts, man, you know. Caper and Buju, you know what I mean? Beris, yeah. you know. Johnny Osborne, the list goes on. So their memories will never be taken because it's something you've experienced. Mm, saying that, who's your favourite artist? Um, that's a tough one, to be fair. <laughs> um, but that's, uh, vocal, I think Wayne Wonder, more so I, I rate his style and he stayed current, but I, I like him as a person. We're friends. Yeah. Um, as a DJ, uh, it's probably... Maybe Beanie Man, to be fair. Probably Beanie Man. And I think that's probably because of my link with Beanie Man, you know? Oh, you're close. Um, you know them. Yeah, that's right. I think when you know someone, it sort of sways that way. And not respect to Beanie Man, he stayed in the game. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I think my wife went to the festival the other week and said, like, he performs. He's a very good performer. So, you know, yeah. same guys there. Sanchez is another one I like and I've got a lot of time for. But, yeah, I mean... More the older artists than some. Of the, I, I do like some younger artists like TJ and people like that. Mm. You know. Okay. Uh, about, Black... Before we open the floor quickly, um, mm. memorable clashes, Scully. Give, give, give us three of your most memorable clashes. And you don't necessarily have to win all of them, you know. Really? Because <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, you must have took a few wells over the years as well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, top three memory clashes, to be fair. Um, it's probably one, like I said, I didn't actually win. Um, in Switzerland, I got to the semi-finals. Yeah. Uh, the Badalang clash, um, which was um, well attended. We played a star from Canada, uh, one from Japan, uh, one from one from Switzerland, I think it was, and another, another star. And... Um, yeah, we didn't win it. We we lost in the final, but it was a good clash. Um, probably. Uh, we'll back from the phone a bit, um, Scully. Yeah, it was a bit funny. Yeah, so. The other one was um, Champions League clash. Uh, that was heats every week in Northwest. West. Um, ended up winning that. Uh, that was a good clash. Um, I think there were 16 sounds, and then your name's drawn out of the hat, and then it's um, three sounds versus three. And we ended up winning that. Which was good, um, and champion. That was Champions League, and we won a war in Sunday in South London. That was another memorable clash as well. So, mm. yeah, there's been quite a few over the years. Um, uh, a long time one was when we played with New Sensation in Oxford. Mm. Yeah, that was a good clash as well. That was fun. Where did they come again? That's but they from Birmingham. 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 That's right. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne Irie. Wayne Sound. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good clash as well. They were good. Yeah, they, 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 they were good. They were good. Yeah, they were. They were very good sound. They mm. still play now. Wayne still plays now, and uh, they yeah. he still does good sound. To be fair, so yeah, that yeah. was some um, memorable clashes. There's, there's been a lot, but they're the ones that probably stick out. Nice. Yeah. I've got a question, uh, Blaps. You want to ask your question? Yeah, how's that, Scully? What? Wow. How are you, mate? Long time. Too long. How you feeling? You know? Yeah, good. How are you? I'm awesome as usual. You know this. Good, good yeah, I know you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, that's good. You know, back in the day, um, we, yeah. we were always rushing out. Where are they playing? Where are they going? Are oh, there somewhere, yeah. somewhere Avenue in Luton? And yeah, some, that's right, um, yeah. Just take over the yard. But even though it was just a small thing, and it was a sh like Shabin thing, and yeah, but, but um. Do you used to bring some serious songs, some tune? Yeah, and yeah. It's... The time of the white label. Yeah, that's the right. Yeah, the yeah. white label. Which what? My question is this: Which white label did you bring out to kill off the other sound? Which was the most regular one you used? Uh, uh, do you know what? To be fair, it was um, we was getting tunes from all over. But when we went into like some of the remixes a bit later down the line, it was um, my friend Shawnee B. We was getting a lot from him, you know. Um, but we was getting music from all over. So, you know, we had a lot of contacts um with the jammies and tubbies and stuff like that. So and record shops as well. I think when you went to the record shop, I know Warwick will tell you that. 
um, some of the people selling the records would hold back records. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so is it? So let me get this right. So is it the tune that someone recorded? Sovereign sound is the body. So you know what I mean? They, yeah, yeah. Are those the ones that kill off? Yeah, yeah. Um, when they're actually recording the it on the record. Yeah. The plate. The plates, yeah. The the plate. They were, um, the plates, the. Yeah. And that's, um, that's something from young. We've always invested a lot of money in cutting the plates. Um, how you doing, Norm? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Good to see yeah, you. Well. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that was something we we done. And, and we still do up to today, to be fair. But um, the originality sort of gone from it. Um, a lot of sound systems now are not a creative. They they just copy what someone else is doing rather than back in the day. A man actually put pen to paper and was a lot more creative, you know. So it's sort of lost in the business again, you know. But you know the business has to move on in it. So I'm just glad that I was about when sound business and dancehall business was at its best. You know, I'm thankful for that. You know, you know, you mentioned a lot of people, right? You know, I grew up in Ocarin with all, every, yeah. whatever. So it's like Alan and Roy and yeah. Paul Gonzalez. I was like, them people were in school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. You yeah. were going out doing sound at night. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? I mean, back at the, them times, of the year, that was, um, it was school oh, in and out weekends. That's how it was. <laughs> that's how it, was. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. School in and out, yeah. Mm. Crazy. So, so, um, laptop or vinyl, Scully? Vinyl all day. Vinyl all day. Yeah, vinyl all day. Man. Yeah, I like, oh, I do yeah. like. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, laptops a lot lighter, Scully, mate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think, to be fair, Rick, I think that's when I first noticed it because when we were traveling <laughs> abroad, it was the record boxes. Yeah, I mean, um, the CD cases and now the laptops. You can't compete, Simple. but. I just yeah. think when you're playing music, you actually feel like you're doing a job. Yes. With records. Yeah. I think with a laptop now, you know, you can predict your set from before and, you know, I'm not taking nothing away. I just think there's... Well, vinyl's kind of coming back now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Vinyl's, yeah. vinyl's coming yeah. back now, isn't it? They're saying yeah. certain dance is just all vinyl. That's yeah. right. I've seen that a few times, to be fair. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that a few I, times. I agree. I agree with keeping with the vinyl because most time you could just put the laptop down and walk away. Yeah, just but, you can't, your leg down. but the problem, yeah, I mean, the problem with the vinyl, Scully, you'll agree in it. You, you need to get the vinyl. Where yeah, that's right. Exactly. Come, all right. Yeah, the, the biggest tune now. You mentioned it early, drift, TJ. Yeah, where are you going to yeah. get a seven-inch of drift? Yeah, you. <laughs> but, you're not sure, yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, I think the people that are playing vinyl will probably be playing the music anyway. Yeah, you get you yeah, can yeah, still yeah. get vinyls pressed for you. There are places. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's very expensive, Norman. Right? You've got yeah. you've got not, twenty not twenty juggling not. tunes. What released? Yeah, right. Mm. And there's like six cuts on one reading. What you're gonna go yeah. to a, a place and press the whole of them? Yeah, you can't. you'd be surprised. You'll be surprised with some people what they're gonna no, do. So you, you're right, Norman. People do do it. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of the root sounds. They're still doing it, aren't they? So yeah, know. that's right. That's right. But, yeah, 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 but it'd be very, yeah, but you have to remember root selecting and juggling selecting. Yeah, hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. So the I man mean. then will play the whole of the tune right for six minutes and then flip yeah. it over <laughs> and play the dub. So that's yeah, twelve. That's... that's twelve, fifteen minutes gone. You play ten tune already, bro. In yeah, that yeah. Minutes. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Not, that's not the point. The point is, right? It, it, it's it's the niceness of the music playing, you know, like mm, that. Because yeah. when it cuts short, to me, it's not enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's each to their own, isn't it? I mean, it's um, it depends what crowd yeah. you're playing for. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And I enjoy playing for people my own age, maybe a bit younger, mm. rather than the standard young juggling crowd, which. I find probably just as probably it's probably easier because mm. a lot of them guys they come and they play top ten and you know <laughs> they play music for a lot less and you know and I find with them they don't play as much vocal mm. and um it's a conversation I have with a lot of the selectors in Newton why don't you not play more vocal what do you mean mm. you know there's still a good a lot of um vocal tune that are, like dancehall tunes that are out there you know mm. so but it's I think you know. 
you just got to move with the times, innit? It's either for you or not. So saying that, moving with the times, what era yeah. do you think was the best? The nineties, oh, two thousand. Nineties, without a doubt. That's, that's easy question. I knew yeah, that was no. coming. To, <laughs> but to be fair, Warwick, that's that's the beauty of it because I, in fact, I'm playing in a nineties dance on Sunday. Yeah, with uh, Alan Brando from Saxon in Bedford, and um, it's a dance I'm looking forward to because I just like playing the nineties song. We're playing Leeds Carnival. Um, Sunday and Monday, and even that, probably a lot of nineties tunes will play because yeah. a lot of people can relate to the nineties tunes. Yeah. You know, not saying there's no good music out there now because yeah. there is a lot, but you know, the nineties, the era I was brought up in, I'm, I feel comfortable playing that. So yeah, What's so the who's the best? Band? Who's the best sound out there, and why? Right, here we go. Uh, I think I think it's down to um, opinions. To be fair, um, I still like Stone Love uh, as a sound system mm -hmm. um, because they've maintained a certain level over the years and been consistent. Um, same thing with Bass Odyssey. Uh, I think them two sounds, I look up to them because they're, it's run like a business. Yeah. You know, and they've always kept, like, they've maintained that stability through all the years. And I just think it's, it's well run, you know. I think a lot of sound systems don't run it like a business. It's more like a hobby, but you spend more money on it than having your own business, <laughs> you know. Because um, even even myself, if, if I look at some of the money I've spent on dub plates, it's, I've probably invested more in that in my, than my own business mm. over the years. So definitely, you know. Is so, it, is it possible to get rich from sound business, Scully? <laughs> <laughs> let's put. I let's take. So much, I wouldn't say so much now. Might, might equal out the equation. Yeah, I think nowadays. Nowadays. it's a bit different. I mean, um, I wouldn't say rich. I, I say you could you could live off your sound quite, not so much in England. Yeah. Um, in Jamaican. Yeah, live. Have a have a career. Have have a you know. Yeah. Turn a pro turn a profit. I'm talking. You know. Yeah. Sort of in, in the nineties, I think you. In nineties, yeah, because I remember. Right. Um, in the nineties, we did because we we I remember we had a um an office at Guildford Street. Me and Robbie, and um, we was paying ourselves nine hundred pound a week. Mm. And that was um I think early two thousands. But then we had we had Mirage residence, we had um Flex at the time. That was a residence, and then we was doing playing out we was playing out nearly every night. Yeah, but Scully, like what you just said, right? I think if you're promoting your dance, then you're making yeah. money. But if you're yeah, just yeah. playing in there and just getting a small fee, yeah. it's a that really makes the Money yeah, hundred percent. And then to be fair, Norms, the problem I've had now that's why I don't keep as much dancers is because there's no room like there used to be to make to make money. I remember keeping a dance in Bedford on a Thursday night. It, I think Robbie kept it. In fact, it wasn't, but we played on it. But we was part of it. And um, the next day, he went and bought a BMW. Yeah, you, know I mean? <laughs> you know, and I remember where was that? It. Where was that? QP, QP, or the other? No, the it was a Thursday before. night. I think it was Tim Westwood. Yeah, the West really good one. Us. in that in that in that kind of retail kind yeah, of Yeah, that's it, Warwick. That's exactly where it was. Yeah, that Thursday night used to be all right, you know. And um yeah, I remember the <laughs> he woke up into, he's going to buy a car. And I was like, wow, yeah. he's, well yeah. people used to travel from far to go to there. Yeah. So mm. back in the day I could see people living off it, um off it of the sound system. Um in England, I wouldn't say there's too many. I know there's probably one or two, or maybe Andrew Fresh does. Um, but I can't think of many more that um, probably lives off of their music, which is a shame. But you have to remember the attendance ain't like they used to be, mm -hmm. even nice. back in the day. Although it's like a pound to go in or five pound to go in, but you look at the attendance as the dances. For real. Um, I, remember, I remember playing in the QP, like you said, um, Warwick in Bedford with King Addis, and there was just under a thousand people. Yeah, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. And even then, if you're charging like a five pound to go in, you know, mm -hmm. you're what still making dance? money. You know? What da so, what dance do you remember the most? Like what you played with somebody and thought, "Wow, yeah, this is a big dance." Do you know? I think one time that sticks in my head was um, after Carnival. We played with um, Nasty Love. That time they were in their prime. Yeah. In um, never forget it was um. The youth house. Okay. First time we played with him in Luton, and God, I've never seen people like that in my life. It, it was so so ramp. 
Yeah, nasty. That was that big sound. Yeah, the, 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 the popular like the attendance. Yeah. Wow, what do you mean? Yeah, the followers. Yeah, they had a massive followers. Yeah. And um, it's funny, it's funny, Scully, because you said you know you probably used like um, so love and that as sort of like a influence, you know. Yeah. But one of my major influences was Robert Allen. Yeah, Funny oh yeah, enough. Robert was very, very good. Man. Yeah, he's the one who told me, said, oh, he's don't worry, you don't need a sound. He goes, ain't there no yeah. old brought down sound and lying around looting what man ain't using? Mm. And I go, yeah. yeah. He goes, well, check them in it. And go, bo- and go, you can borrow their sound. And I went back to Luton and I went to check Trini and, I, and that's how we started to borrow his sound. And, and, and do you know what, Roika? I think Robert gave me that advice. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what? I think I think Robert and them like, actually was the first people to set the trend doing it. Mm. Yeah. I think they were. Remember, because you remember work at a time, yeah. every man was saying, yo, if they ain't got a sound, they're not playing on my sound. Yeah, you're not playing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Remember that work? Yeah, we used to yeah. get that hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, would, then, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you agree, um, Scully, at one time when yeah. sounds used to play, we was in a different, we, we uh, our, our way of life was different. If we knew each other like that and you had a set still. Yeah. Support you by supporting you with boxes or whatever. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think there's, especially back then, it's hard to believe it, but even back then, there's a lot more unity than there is yeah. now. For real. Mm-hmm. Because I think the, the difference then. Scully, no, Scully, I don't think you could have turned up at Falcon's garage and said, "Oh, let let let." No, 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 no. I'm talking about it. local sounds that had a good setup. Yeah, and boxes. They would respond to you. Yeah, you, I, Work, know, I, don't, I, I don't think. I don't. Sorry, Norm, to cut you. I don't think That's it's cool. like that. You, you, you wouldn't. You would yeah. get it. I don't think you would ask. You know that way. That yeah, yeah, I think it's a bit it. different. So you'd never yeah. know, would you? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I remember. I remember a time, a blues playing right. Carl Steve was playing in there, and the preamp broke down. Yeah, and them times there, I was to a build like that, and yeah. I had a preamp built. By what's his name? And it's a nice preamp. And I, I lent it to him, carried yeah. on with the dance all night. Well, mm. well I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you a joke. We had a clash one night in um, Ipswich with Missile, and our mic stopped working. Right. And what was happening? There was, when it was their time to play, they played with their mic. And when it was our time, we borrowed their mic. We'd walk across to give us the mic and play. And, nice. me and, Skipper and, and me and Skipper and me and Skipper have been friends ever since. You know, I played at his wedding now, and we go way, way back. And Missile's still an active sound in Ipswich, a big sound. And and just from that, from that, you just you just look at people in a different light. Because mm. um, I mean, back in the day, don't get me wrong, people used to take things personal. You know, um, I even Sovereign and Gemini, but Lawrence Palmer was someone I always got on with. You know, mm. <laughs> you know. Lawrence was someone from back then I always got on with him, respected um, what he'd done. And maybe because I saw things in a different light because I was young and I looked up to people like them lot in Gemini sound thinking, wow, mm. I don't know it's a rivalry, what them guys were doing, you know, and, and Falcon and them guys as well, you know. Right. So it's not until you get older you think back and say, yeah, that man, you know, they held it together for many years. Mm. You know, so yeah, I think as you get older... You, Appreciate what certain people have done mm. and how hard it's been, you know. What sound would you like to clash in Luton? To uh, say, to say, to 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 put a stamp down and say, yeah. I mean, probably our yeah, number one. We're we're organising that at the moment with um yeah. Venus and Venus and Rolex. I spoke. Right. I spoke to Bally. I spoke to Bally last week, man, and he yeah. said he's on. He yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Uh, like, I think the problem has been um the time I'd clash them tomorrow. I'm not bothered because. I'm confident with myself and, and playing them. And and win, lose or draw, we're all friends at the end of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think people have to remember that. I think it's something that people want to see. Someone has to be a winner and someone someone has to lose, don't they? It's as easy mm-hmm. as that. Yeah, but but not, I don't think it's it's personal because me beating Venus or, or Rolex is not going to change where I am in life and vice versa to them, you know? But I think it's something as, as a community it would be good to put on. So you said that from the sound system. How did you end up with the club? How did that work? Uh, we we was playing there um on a Friday night, and mm. um I remember the guy called us in and said he's putting the club up for sale, and we was like, wow, this is like our main income. You know what I mean, 
our Friday nights at the club was really good. Like he would, we, got, we struck a deal with him where he was giving us the door money, and um, he was taking the bar, and and it was ram every week. So he's like, well, what are we gonna do? We had a, we had a Saturday night. I think we was doing Mirage on the Saturday, which was good as well. So there was our main income, and we was keeping other dances. So when he said to me, um, "This club's up for sale," I was like, "Whoa!" And he said, "Why don't you think about buying it?" And I was like, "No, nah, it's way out of our." way out of a league that to get money to do that, you know, and um spoke to a couple of people, spoke to my wife, um and my mother in law and my parents and they got the money together. I had a little bit of money put away and we got the money together and then um we moved on forward from there, to be fair, which it was a very good experience running a club, but we faced a lot of um racism from the police. Yeah. Because when we first got the club, um the white guy who had it, Dave Skinner, who's, we're still friends now, he's a nice guy. Um, we uh, The conditions was, we had a six o'clock license you can use any day of the week. So you could use it seven days a week with no mm. problem. He never did, but it was the conditions of the license. So we used to we used to be able to go to six o'clock Friday and Saturday. And then all of a sudden, as soon as we've got it, the police are coming down saying like they were not review our license i'm saying so why didn't you review it before that's mm. so they said well we can't take it away or do nothing but will you drop it to four o'clock so we said all right to save peace yeah we'll do it to four o'clock so they wrote that we could use it four o'clock every 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 time we open the club to be fair and in the end they wanted us to drop that to two o'clock and we said no nah. mm. so we ended up we ended up taking them to court and i'm um, winning the court case to be fair um mm. From then, it was just hell from police, mate. Um, we'd be keeping a night and, you know, they'd just do a random check. 16 police walk into your club. It's like a raid. You know yeah, yeah. But it was like, house. yeah, black people having a club in itching. They just didn't want it to happen. You know, mm. um, the licensing woman was horrible. She was Italian and um, a woman called Miss Silveria and she made our life a hell. I'll never forget we had a dance um, with Mighty Crown like the Saturday and she'd come around and she walked in the cellar and she said, oh, they should be like, um, the floor needs to be raised. And I said, like, the, it's been like this for years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. And she said, well, if it's not raised by weekend, then the, your dance can't carry on. This time we've spent money bringing Mighty Crown and everything else. So we've had to work day and night to get it done. So she, and she come around and checked it. Mm. Make sure it was done. It's just, just things like that they threw in the way. So it was very, very challenging um, as a black, person and or my wife's Asian for us to have a club there was a lot of um obstacles put up in the way through the police and the licensing because they just didn't want us to have it so the so achievement went for 11 years and it was a good achievement um yeah. funnily enough we're speaking about that today you know Warwick and, and my wife mentioned your name because we're we're organizing um a penthouse reunion and she said yeah. oh, we've got to get Warwick to play and Adder and the yeah. guys that used to come yeah. was like yeah so that's yeah, um that. on the, that's on the agenda. So you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't run a club remember, again. Then. I so no, I skip, no, no, yeah, not because of that. Killer. I think I used to yeah. love playing up there. I used to love that. That was one of my favorite yeah. clubs. Yeah, yeah, good, mine, good mine, 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 and, as a, um, I would say, as a doorman working at that club, I hated this yeah. day. Yeah, that's right. I, like <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I liked it. There yeah. was only one incident I saw there, and it happened outside. Yeah. To be fair, we, we never had much trouble there in general, to be fair. Yeah. I, think, I think people really supported it. And um, I think when you have a business like that, you need the support of the people. So it's important that you try and get on with people. But people are not coming out like they used to. No, I definitely wouldn't have a club now, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I think there's... How did that night with Bounty Killer go? Like you said, uh, you weren't there at the club. At I wasn't the there, but apparently... I was there. I was there. Steve. Yeah, I, I wasn't there, but um, apparently it was the quite... I played in Switzerland. It was nice. Oh, no, no. Let's make Sean say... Sorry, go Yeah, on. sorry. I, I, I wasn't there. So Norm's... He could tell me more about it to me. Because it was there. nice. It was yeah. nice. Oh, I, mean, I was, I was there. I thought you yeah. was there, Skipper. Probably no. was, still. 
He was. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't. Lots, lots of nights we forget about you can't remember them. You, you know, know that, innit? Yeah, no, yeah. but I remember him in that, in, 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 in Scully's place. Yeah. But like you said, that Scully was the first time he came around it. I want it to be fair. I think so. Yes. Scully yeah. went there and Killer was going yeah, on the way, man. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. Up right. in Iris, I heard that, I mean... Um, Cause, I'm, cause I'm, he, he was walking, <laughs> at, he came off the little platform and was walking around. Yeah. He yeah. might come right by the bar where we was. That's right, yeah, that yeah. Him yeah. After. yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I think in general the night went well, just getting back to Killer there, but, you know... You know, um, having these artists there is never straightforward, is it? <laughs> Do you mm. mean? <laughs> what would you say to a, a, a budding DJ coming up now? What advice would you give them? Just to um, do it, do it from your heart. You know, do it to the best of your ability, and um, mm. you know, don't get involved in the hype so much. I know it's easily said than done, but I think oh, a lot of these artists they lose their way through hype. You know, and having the wrong people around them, and you know. That's 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 what I think, mm. <clears throat> and I think for str- do it for the love of it, you know, the money that's come in it. Mm. Anybody else have a question for sure? The current crop of sound, sound and DJs starting coming up in, you know, to say Luton, you know, what I mean, Luton, yeah. Bedfordshire. Yeah, who 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 do you rate? Who do you think's got the potential? To be fair, I, I think um. Well, yeah, the line, you put your light on, Mark. Yeah, it's like what? Mark, put your 30, light on. You're looking... We're not even 30. I should say 40 years. Mark, you put a light on your room. Yeah. It's a bit dark. Oh, you're on about at the moment? <laughs> yeah. Um, Hello? I think there's... Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon, who, do you reckon, who do you reckon could do a, do a sovereign roadshow? Could do a f- in the business? Um... I, I I think someone like Dirty Dex, to be fair, I, I like yeah. Dex. Um, yeah, he's all right. He's he's humble. Um, he's got a good character as well. Um, he's got a very good sound system. Um, very knowledgeable. Um, I remember meeting Dex. I think it was fourteen, fifteen. I went up to um Charles when he had his studio to do some get some tunes, and I heard some some reggae music, but old reggae music playing. I was like, who's in there? And when I went in there. It was Dex and he was 14. I was like, how does he know about all these tunes there? Do you mm. know mean? And from then, uh, we just started speaking. Um, and um, I've just watched him grow. So he's a grown man now. Um, and just think he's a youth, knowledgeable. I've got a lot of time for him. Very good entertainer. You know, um, yeah, I just think he's good. Um, also, Village. I like Village. Village is probably on every dance going with a juggling. Um, same again, I think. More so with him when he first came to Luton, I think he got a big fight. Um, for some reason, people weren't booking him. And I remember speaking to him and he, he stayed at it now. Because I think the sound system, everyone has their time, didn't they? Sure. And I think it's his time now, you know, where he's playing on a lot of dances. Good entertainer. Uh, you can select, you know. Um, but there's a few case specials. Another one is talented. Um, come up from London. He's been up Luton a while. Um, quite old. He's an old... I think he's must be early forties or thirty eight, but um same again, I've seen seen him grow up playing music, very knowledgeable, gifted, you know. But there's a few, you know, flavour. He's got good good sound system, same again, you know, he's, remember when he built his sound, he's done very well from it. So there's quite a few to name, to be fair. But um I just think as long as they're would you say the reggae scene in, 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 in Luton's quite healthy? Uh not really. If I'm being honest, that's my personal view. I don't think it is. I mean, you guys will remember because you're coming at the same era how Luton used to be. Um, I'm not saying it's flat because it's better than a lot of places, but I just think the lack of venues is is always a problem, you know. Um, lack of venues is a big problem. And and then when you do get a venue, it's what they're charging for you to make money from it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I've I've cut down on keeping dances because... Even my birthday I used to keep every year and I stopped doing it because I'm saying, like, I'm just ramming out someone's club. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm-hmm. To celebrate my birthday, I might as well go out to dinner with my, my family and yeah, friends. You, you never done it. You never done it this year, did you? No, I haven't done it for the last, since, just since COVID. I said, I'm, okay. I made a yeah. stamp to say I'm not going to do it. And people keep saying, why don't you do it? And I'm like, I think as you get older, you, you, you look at different things and even playing sound to play it every week, I'm like, if I'm playing at Cabanas every week and places like that, 
someone like myself, that means I've not moved on in life. Do you mean? Can't be keep doing the same thing. Do you You're mean? So, too regular. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit more selective with my dancers. I'd rather play out once a month and it's very good than play it every week. Mm. And, and the dancers are empty or shabby or it's not enjoyable. Do you mean? Yeah. And um, I've just looked at it over the years. We've been quite successful playing them good dancers. So I want to keep that name. Yeah. I don't want to wash out the brand. You know what I mean? So, which, which part of the UK would you say was the best place to have a dance? Uh, well, at the moment or in general? Uh, in general, really. Yeah. Um, Birmingham's always a good place um, without the violence. <laughs> Do you mean? Um, but <laughs> to be fair, um, you could look at London as well. But I, I've had some good dances in Luton, to be fair. Some very good dances where really? well attended, okay. the people travelled all over. So I think it's each to their own. Um, I think because Luton's smaller, the community's smaller, so it's easier to get out there. And with social media now, it covers a lot anyway. Mm. So um, I've got no real preference. This um, I've been quite lucky. I've played in most places in the in the UK, so I'm quite lucky like that. I think what was it last week? We was in Manchester, you know, for the carnival. Okay. You know, okay. this week we're in Leeds. So yeah, we're we're quite lucky that way. But I just think the scene in general has dropped. You know, um, it's not, not the attendance is a lot less than it used to be. So I think it's just difficult in general. Mm. You ever play? You ever played at People's Club in uh, Paddington? Yeah, I did. Uh, to be fair, I've got a story about People's Club. To be fair, is it People's <laughs> Club? Well, yeah. First time I went there. Oh, suck after that, yeah, I, I probably was never going to go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went there okay. one night. I was only young, and um, there's a fight outside. Never forget it. And a, a yeah. guy pulled out an axe and chopped the guy in his foot, man. And oh, <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I was like, and that was my first experience going there, and I was like, I'm never going back there again. But I did go back there because there's a few good dogs. But they still have a they still have a monthly thing, you know, and it's quite nice with two walls, yeah. But it goes down just past Archway when you're going down towards um, what's that round about, Tim? I forget the name of the road, but it's it's on that on that road now. Yeah, people's used to it. Was, it was good, man. It was good. I, yeah. I go there sometimes still, Scully. Once oh, I know. Is, uh, is it by Highbury yeah. and Islington? Highbury Corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because I've drove past it a few times. It's got two so homes as well. That's I mean, right. It goes to Lake North. Yeah, downstairs. Then you've got the upstairs, kind of. Yeah, that's right. That's I've never been in there since, but yeah, um, yeah, I've drove right. past it. Yeah, I mean, they're good times, man. You that's, can see that's... open there. They've got a smoking place. It looks like they're open. Yeah, that was yeah. my education, them places, man. Nice. That's why, you know, you look back there and you you, you 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 learn a lot. You just think, wow, you know. And to see some people still involved from back then till now, you know, it's good to see. You see, my era used to be like, oh, four aces. Yeah. <laughs> um, Taunting me when Coxon used to play. And then Rory Yeah, I remember four aces well. Lemingo. Yeah, we used to play at um, Trends. Yeah. yeah, all of them. Right. Right. That's my era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you might, you may, maybe you remember Josiah then? Remember Josiah? Yeah, no, of course I remember Josiah. Yeah. Is it really? Wow, yeah, Josiah, man. That yeah, was, I remember that Josiah. Was, that was a style I used to be in that side. Well, kind yeah, of. I remember them, yeah, I remember them years that. ago. Yeah. All, all, in, in those days, all around Dawson was a was a place to be, you know, there was yeah. so many clubs. Yeah. You had, so you had, you had Sky man. Rocket, that had the yeah. girls followers. Yeah. You yeah. go in any of his blues, because he was a blue sound, right? That's right, yeah. Every single week. Jimmy Magic was popular as well then, wasn't he? Jimmy, Jimmy Magic, you know. Jimmy Magic, yeah. Jimmy yeah. Magic, yeah. Yeah. He had yeah. Trains, he had Chimes. Maxims. Maxims, Pegasus. Yeah. Yeah, we used yeah, to play at Holly Street. Yeah, Holly Street. Street. Yeah, Holly yeah, Street. Yeah, Street. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Street. yeah, there was a. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Good times, man. Good, Good times. times. Yeah, there were. Yeah, yeah, Do you remember a sound, um, Scully named Neville Enchanter? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Big sound. That's the yeah, one very... from Flint Flamingo. Yeah, that's right. I remember. I remember that. There were a big sound. The yeah, big sound they used to play with Coxon and all the big sounds at Battersea Park every, every yeah, year. Yeah, Battersea, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Open there. Good sounds come out of them. 
that that place then. Yeah, it's you yeah, know you look, you look mind. back at them sounds. Yeah, you look back at them sounds and you think, wow. It's yeah, stunning, so. Before we wrap up, yeah, um, yeah. How long? How, how long do you think you're gonna go on for? <laughs> As, as long as I keep enjoying it, to be fair. Do you reckon can get to 50? What do you reckon? Well, do you know what? I mean, as long as I keep enjoying it and we can... Um, I know Ronnie Biggs, he's, I think he's 60 next year and he, he, I can't see him retiring no time soon either. <laughs> I think it's just, just the love of the music, you know. We've got Dapper the young guy on the sound. Dapper's in his 30s. Yeah. Hopefully he can carry it on. But I think as long as we're playing out and people are attending it and the love is still there, you know... I, I don't see me going out playing out South System forever, but you never know, do you? You know, it's it while I'm enjoying it. It would be great to get to 50, though, wouldn't it? It would be, it would be a Oh, yeah, 100%. Thing, yeah, 100%. It would, yeah, it would yeah, be. There's, be not, there's not many sounds who've managed to do that. No, that's right. Sally, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course, Kevin. Would you, would you think about your son running it, or would you not? Do you know what? It's it's just the generations are different norms. They're just not interested. <laughs> okay. They're just not interested. Um, and I think, I think times has changed from when we were. Uh, music was the do and the end all for us, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think um now they've got different, you know, different places to put their energy and to invest their time and stuff like that, you know. They don't like, like we used to. Yeah. They really but, don't. A lot of the time, we was playing music, as we all know, we was meeting our friends <laughs> as well, you know? So it wasn't just the music, it was meeting friends, catching up, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, I mean, things have changed. You know, some say for the better, some say for the worse, don't they? So. Oh. All right, Scully, mm. man. Respect for that, brother. Yeah, yeah nice thanks you guys. Thanks course. for your time, man. Much appreciated, yeah, man. Keep great, up the man. good work, man. Yes, Keep spreading the love. Bless, yeah, bless. Man. Good thanks. Yeah, man. Speak soon. Take care. Thanks. Right, Take care. Care. Thank you. Thanks.